Now you listen to me, listen to me real good. I've told you once, I said it a thousand times. You get out of those pagan, satanic, religious, Christian churches. Christians do not follow the commandments of the Bible. Christians do what they want to do. They make up their own laws, their own rules, and their own regulations. Come out of her, my people, and come out from among them. And it's real simple and easy to ascertain who are these people you need to come out from. Easy. Number one, if they keep Sunday, that's an automatic sign that you need to not have any fellowship with these commandment-breaking wicked deceivers and seducers and bewitchers of the truth. Simple. Let me see, what was that? What was that? 16 years ago, went to Tyler, Texas. Guy shows up at a meeting, because then I was on international shortwave radio. And uh, of course you didn't know me. What was you doing 16 years ago? Well, you seen what I was doing 16 years ago. I was about my father's business. Cause you heard that spirit get cast out too. Them folks didn't know what hit them. Woo wee! And you know what? I ain't heard nothing since from that man. Yeah, got delivered. I ain't heard. I ain't. I heard nothing since from him. Can't tell you how many people that I have delivered through the mighty, powerful name of Jesus over the years, and I don't hear nothing from them. Cause I can can't even keep account of how many people done went back. You know people gonna go back, right? They gonna put their hand to the plow and they gonna look back, showing you that they ain't fit for the kingdom. And um, I watch it. Man, people don't have no joy, no spark in their life. One reason why they don't have no joy because they don't read the Bible. They don't have a personal relationship with the Father to keep them charged up and to keep them going throughout the years. But if you would fast, pray, you read your Bible, 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 read your Bible. So I read my Bible every single morning. Every single morning. I was reading it last night about 2 o'clock in the morning when I woke up. And I was like, man, I got five hours of sleep, man. 2 o'clock in the morning, I read it from about 2 to 4. So I fell asleep again. So I read two more hours. That's how you stay connected to the Most High Yah and you keep His fear before your eyes and it never leaves your face. Blessings to each and every last one of you. This is Pastor Dow here on Blog Talk Radio. Shabbat Shalom to some of you. Glory to the kid. Oh, looks like everybody like my marriage series. As a matter of fact, I did a video two weeks ago on a marriage license. 251,000 hits. I even got people that ain't even in the faith asking questions about this thing. You know why? Because they know I'm telling the truth. I mean, heathens, pagans that don't even have a belief system want to know what we know and what we got to say about this in order to get their families free. And that's something. Well, here we are again. Last um, blog talk radio, we talked a little bit about the marriage license and the reason why you shouldn't contract with the government. And mind you, all contracts are voluntary. It's like when you go in and get your birth certificate. See, this is what they do. Uh, they, they try to force you through coercion to get the birth certificate and they always go to the woman. They always go to the woman and try to get her compliance. And your woman needs to be, your wife needs to be strong enough to say, there's my husband right there. Because this world is matriarchal and they, they try to forget the man, emas emasculate him, eviscerate him, the whole nine yards. Sister Angelica, they try to mess with her 
And Angelica kept pointing her to her husband. Good, strong Israelite woman. Good, strong Israelite woman. Just can't beat good, strong Israelite women. Can't beat it. Hallelujah, that was Stan. When Elder Doug and I showed up, they didn't know if we were attorneys or lawyers or not. You know what they still did anyway? Uh, they turned it into their human resources, human services, and then they called the Department of Human Services. Because then what they do? Uh, they called a little... They had their little DHS come out, had a little sheriff patrol, and still, guess what? When it was all said and done, they sent Brother Scott and his family a nice little letter telling them we're sorry for the inconvenience. Uh, we know that this is a precious time in your life with a newborn child. You won't be hearing from us anymore. Do you know the reason why? Because the state had no jurisdiction. You know the reason why? While they had a marriage license, they did not sign the birth certificate, and they broke the power of the state. And, of course, that little girl, I think she's either three or four years old now. Maybe I think she's four years old now. Could be older. Flat, fastest time going. I don't know how old Judith is. I, every time I ask, I forget because it keeps changing. <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? No vaccines. None of our children. No vaccines. Not one case of autism. She's four. All right, and Judge says she's four years old. Them four years went by fast as I don't know what. Huh? I mean, think about it. If me and Elder Doug show up in blue jeans, uh, polo shirt, plaid shirt, and we don't say nothing too much, we just look. Don't we look like two attorneys? Good cop, bad cop? Of course, I'm the good cop, and Elder Doug is the bad cop. You know what I mean? Or the good lawyer, bad lawyer. I'm the good lawyer, Elder Doug is the bad lawyer. He'll make a good team when we show up places. People have no idea who we are. And they're thinking that they'll call their legal team up there. Boy, them doctors, everybody stay the you-know-what away from us. Got to know what you're doing. All right. Let's continue on here with a little bit of more wisdom. I'm going to debate if I'm going to take phone calls or not because people enjoyed my last marriage system or marriage study I did last blog talk as well as on YouTube as well as on Patreon so much so much so much that they are looking forward to me continuing on all right I think I covered that part right there yep what causes state marriage or state license marriage to fail isn't that a good subject or topic to start on tonight? What causes state marriage license to fail? All right, the reason why I don't give out the guest calling number because I don't know if I'm going to accept phone calls now. I'm getting ready to fill you up with a plethora of knowledge, all right, that you need to know. Do you know that there were over 800,000 divorces last year? 800 thousand plus divorces it's a lucrative business for the judicial system for the judges and for the attorneys very lucrative business huh do you know that over 70 percent of all marriages secular that is end in divorce 70 percent can't believe that so you got to ask yourself a question, even with those statistics, do you want to participate even in their, I mean, would you take them odds right there? Uh, you have a 70, let's say if you had a 70% a, a chance of dying, if you did a certain thing, would you do it? Would you do it 70%? Would you do it? Most rational people will say, not no, but hell no, I won't do it. <laughs> and them kind of odds. Well, why would you participate in a system of corruption that tells you that you have to get a license, which are true, you don't have to. You can still function without it. You can even still file paperwork and even still get your spouse's last name to be changed to your last name. I wonder what, what is that stuff today when these women hold on to two last names? What is that stuff? Huh? I mean, you can't. Providing you know what you're doing, it's a learning curve. And I'm learning more and more and more about it every day that I study. Over a half 
of marriages end in divorce and more than the national average of, watch this, Christian, more than half. Look at that. More than half of Christian marriages end in divorce. In other words, Christians say they don't believe in divorce, but they can't stop doing it. So, what cause do we have to believe that a state marriage license really improves the stability of marriage and prevents injustice? Come on, man. Think about that. We assert that the state marriage license actually promotes injustice and incentives parties to divorce because of, number one, women are incentivized to divorce so that they can turn men into economic slaves for decades at a time so that they can refuse to work and thereby are encouraged by law to turn marriage into a welfare institution and a form of legalized prostitution where the sex comes during the marriage and the money comes after the divorce. Man, the state has done thought this through carefully and they've got it down packed, don't they? Number two, because of all domestic violence laws, men are discriminated against by the courts and women can make false allegations about fathers that will increase their custody and the child and the child support, spousal support that they receive. These same false allegations also become a tool of parental alienation if the woman is angry and wants revenge. Why should the law allow or condone such abuses? That's a good question, isn't it? I mean, after all, if you get a polygraph, that's $300. Three to four, three, three to four to five hundred dollars to try to prove that your spouse is a liar. Well, we believe that all the state's laws on marriage and civil contract created by marriage license have done is encourage number one bullet point idolatry to money, paper, and personal security. That's what it's done. Now, mind you, I understand I'm not painting a broad brush here, okay? I understand that a lot of this doesn't pertain to a lot of sound, rational people. I, I'll give an example. I mean, you've been married 30, 40 years. Why even worry about getting a divorce when you got a state marriage license in ignorance a long, long time ago? Go ahead and get Social Security. Go ahead and get all them benefits and everything else. I mean, after all, you've been together that long. You're a fool if you leave a relationship after that unless one of them is just done going to stalk, raving mad and off the deep end and decide they're going to go sin. You understand what I mean? Um, I understand that this is, I'm not painting a bar, broad brush to say that this is conducive or considerate across the board for everybody in the United States of America. But I will say this. The Christians are outdoing the world when it comes to divorce. Isn't that amazing? Thereby proving that God did not join them together. Or now it's called God of State. Number two, greed. Bullet point. Bullet point number three, dishonesty. What are we talking about here, just in case you forgot? I know a lot of people in America got short attention spans. Why should the law allow or condone such abuses? Idolatry to money. That's why I said money and personal security. Greed, dishonesty. Bullet point number four, lack of personal responsibility and accountability. Bullet point number five, selfishness. A mothers to keep their children away from the fathers. You know, mothers do that because they know they done um, lost the heart of their husband. You understand what I mean? They done lost the heart of their husband. And they know that this man no longer cares about them, so now they use the children as leverage and bribery. You know what? I would tell you this. There's hope. You just have to use patience. Without fail, I've seen the majority of the children. Now, that's not all the way across the board. But I've seen a lot of children come back and ask their fathers their side of the story when they became of age, only to end up bitter against their wicked Jezebel witch lying mother. 
See, the mother is hoping that the lies will keep the children away because they're using support of the system. Number six, bullet point. A high suicide rate amongst divorced men. Man, that's one way to be able to get your assets over to the woman, huh? She already got the devil on her side. Get the men to think about suicides, kill themselves. That way they inherit everything you work for anyway. That's why I teach you. Learn how to diversify your assets. Learn how to diversify your assets and keep them out of the scope of the government. Keep them out of the scope of the system. And some of you is too late. Bullet point, one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, or six bullet points. Seven. Seven bullet point. Sexual abuse of men. By withholding sex and threatening divorce, the legal action of women uh, don't get Everything they want and demand from their husband, we call this the booty boycott. The booty boycott. And it's quite common in, in a female weapon. Huh. I wonder when men are going to start using the penis boycott because they do get sexually frustrated at times. But isn't that sad, though? If a woman refuses to have sex with her husband, she is breaking Torah. Because... She is supposed to give conjugal rights any time that that man wants it, with exception of the limitations of the monthly menstruating cleaning cycle. You're in direct violation of Yah's law. Using witchcraft just like the world uses. You're in trouble. All the above issues have been personally experienced by the future husband as a consequence of a licensed marriage. And he will not permit them to ever again be the possibility in any future relationship. In other words, if once a man gets divorced and he gets a taste of this bitter, wicked Babylon system, that man will never anyway, unless he's a fool and a simp, go out and get another marriage license. He won't do it. See, Pastor Dow talk about all this stuff because I want to not only inform you, I want to inform everybody who got ears to hear so they don't be subjugated to probate. By this wicked, unjust system. This law, and y'all ain't figured it out that this law ain't, ain't, that there's no justice in this law. So when we ask the question, why would a yard fearing Israelite couple want to obtain recognition of their spiritual relationship from a godless state that acknowledges same sex marriages, LGBT, EFG, LMNOP relationships? state legalizes homosexuality and even promotes materialism, theft, and idolatry by guarding or by guaranteeing parties who divorce more money and property than they personally earned during a marriage. I mean, this is Leviticus 18.22. Doesn't it state that homosexuality is a sin? It's an abomination? You know, thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind, is an abomination. Known Exodus or Shemot 2015 says that you should not steal. Christians don't care what the Bible says. I got a question. Can a government that condones and licenses idolatry, theft, and such sinful behavior be properly described as authorized or ordained by Yah, Yahweh, God, Elohim, Mighty One, Most High, can he? You know, we should honor, oh, we need to ask our question. Should we honor such a licentious government? I mean, 1 Peter 2, one, uh, chapter 13, no, 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 13 through 17, suggests that uh, that we, subject ourselves to oppressive and unjust laws we aren't otherwise required to that it right simply by getting a marriage license we believe not which is why we want a sovereign israelite marriage because we are a sovereign nation we are chosen generation a royal priesthood a holy nation you know what i'm saying it's only for righteous people because 
both men and women realize that they're a team and they're in the beast system, born in the beast world, born in the devil system, and realize that what I'm saying is both for men and women. See, righteous women, righteous men don't have any trouble about what I'm saying. Huh? So instead, we choose to honor the biblical mandate below us, Psalms 118, verse 89. It is better to trust in Yahweh than to put our confidence in man. And it's better to trust in Yahweh than to put our confidence in princes or i.e. quote unquote government. Psalms 146 verse 3 says, put not your trust in princes government, nor in the son of man in whom there is no help. Talking about these people here on this earth. Another criticism of sovereign Israelite marriage is the idea that it is living in sin. You know how many people got their concept out there that they are living in sin? You know, they even had uh, a Methodist church. I forget the name of the church up there in Wisconsin. They got this guy named Ron Young as a schoolmaster, and they got this guy named Chris Steinberger as supposed to be some type of principal or something. And you know what they did with one of our Israelite families? Watch this. They turned around, and because his wife lied on him, and they want to put this man under scrutiny, a just man at that, and, and uh, wanted to grill him about his marital situation, but they let a man and a woman who are just living together put their children in their school, and by their own bylaws and doctrine, they state that you must have a marriage license in order for us to accept your children. Y'all seeing what's going on? It is truly a black and white situation, if you know what I mean. It is truly a black and white situation. But that, you don't believe how many people think that they're living in sin because they don't get a marriage license or, or attain one. If that is the case, then Adam and Eve lived in sin, didn't they? George Washington lived in sin too, then, didn't he? As, yeah, the book of Genesis confirmed that all the patriarchs lived in sin. All of them lived in sin because none of them had a state marriage license. That's why I keep asking you, whose name is at the top of your marriage certificate or license? You know, some pastors will say that there needs to be some legal uh, relation between the married parties so that the following goals can be realized. You know what them goals are? Spouses are incentivized not to leave the relationship, but instead to work things out and overcome their selfishness by trying to stop, by, by, I mean, by trying to develop trust and good communications. Basically what you're saying is, is if two people ain't just and they wicked as hell, they ain't going to make it work anyway. So you got to bind them by pieces of paper. You got to bind them by the state through their chains and everything else, their fetters and everything else, because since the world is so unjust and nobody ain't got the Holy Spirit, nobody follows the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High God. Therefore, a man can't be trusted even at his best state. We got to bind them legally and lawfully by the state to make sure that we put an invisible chains around their wrist and tie them up through the system of tyranny to make sure that they don't have <clears throat> incentives to go ahead and leave. Bullet point number two. Most spouses are required to take full financial and personal responsibility for their children. Really? That's a lie. The state only wants you to do that because they don't want to be saddled with the child support. I mean, after all, I remember well over 30 something years ago, Sister Carol and I sit down in the living room, we had a discussion. You wanna know what that discussion was? We knew that there's always a potential that we wouldn't stay married. Or there's a great potential we would stay married. Either way it goes, I mean after all, today is a 70% chance. But um, we sit down and had a very intelligent civil conversation and we said, that if something ever happened to us, we will not make the children's victims just because we can't have a relationship. And, of course, at the time, I'm the breadwinner, and I told her, I said, you ain't never got to worry about the children being supplied. She said, I ain't even, I don't even have to ask that. I know you will take care of your responsibilities. Where is 
that type of integrity with people today? Huh? I mean, I got young people that ain't even married that think they know how to be married. And they ain't got shit. They ain't got a pot to piss in and one to throw it out of and a yard to receive it. They ain't even worked long enough for anything to do nothing to obtain anything. And they ain't got enough. Hey, I left home. Left home. At 18 years old. With zero dollars. I think at most I had in my pocket. I can't say that. I think I had $20 in my pocket. G-O-N-E. Gone. And ain't never been back to live since. 18 years old. By the time I was 21 years old, 18, 19, 20, 21, yeah, I had two children, a wife. That's moving, isn't it? I'm not saying this so you can compare apples and oranges. I'm just giving you something here, all right? You got to understand, some of you, you got it in your heart. You think you know this world. And let me tell you this. This world is a whole lot more wicked than what it was when I was coming up. A whole lot more wicked. You can't even keep just women, even in the faith today. If y'all heard some of the reports that I got this week of how wicked some of these young Israelite so-called daughters of Zion is, man, you would even run to stay away from their foul asses. It's foul. What I need to do is fly Mom Muncie out there to Kansas and let her build a home in your ass. That's what I need to do. Even the mothers are in, in short supply and demand nowadays. I wouldn't even want to grieve her like that. She's too righteous to be grieved like that. Mothers are for young women that will listen to what mothers say love their husbands, love their children, and is willing to guide the house. Today, these people ain't, ain't oh, let me go on, let me go on. All right. Bullet point three in this one right here, the property they accumulated together can be properly dispersed under all conditions. Isn't that amazing? Tell you what, I'll be right back here in just a second. I'm going to run on up front here, and I am going to check what's going on uh, in the chat room, see what type of Listening audience we have, if you'll love to support this man of Yah, uh, your gifts, your donations, and your offerings, uh, we are in the process of setting up a foundation. We couldn't get to it this week, and we'll get all that information to you soon, so you'll be able to give and give freely without any, without any word about the IRS or anybody. Anyway, um, so if you like to give to this ministry, this man of Yah who labors day and night in the word for your benefit and your uh, exhortation and comfort. Let me give you our mailing address. Be right back here in just a moment. Shalom, this is Sister Wenda. I hope that all of you are enjoying the broadcast that you're listening to right now. We appreciate each and every last one of you, our faithful listeners and supporters of the Straightway Truth radio broadcast. We try to make sure that we do our due diligence and do our best to ensure that you have the best broadcast as well as the truth coming to you in the hour that we're living in right now. If you would like to help us in this endeavor, your offering will be greatly appreciated in the work of the Ministry of the Most High Yah. Our mailing address for your gift, offering, or letter of support is Charles Dowell, Jr. That's Charles Dowell, Jr. And Dowell is spelled D-O-W-E-L-L. -L. 506 Ellington Drive. Ellington is spelled E-L-L-I-N-G-T-O-N. P.O. Box 32, Lafayette, Tennessee. And Lafayette is spelled L-A-F-A-Y-E-T-T-E-37083. -E -E Again, our mailing address is Charles Dowell, Jr., 506 Ellington Drive, P.O. Box 32, Lafayette, Tennessee, 37083. If you would like to contact us by way of phone, the country code is 1, area code 615-688-3025. Six, six, eight, eight, 
That's 1-615-688-3025. You may leave a message there and, be the Father's will, we will do whatever we can to try to return your message. It is our hope and our prayer that as you continue to listen to the Straightway Truth Ministry, and as you apply the teachings of this ministry, that you are finding peace and growth within you, your family, and life as well. Please tell others so that the truth may also have an impact and touch others' lives so that they may enjoy the benefits of the truth of Jesus Christ just like we all are. Shalom. The King is coming. You know, somebody had asked me, why am I going through all this? You have to understand, if you can find another pastor out there in this world that has your best interest in mind, greater and better than I do, please show him to me. Please show him to me. I would love to meet him. Because we're going to sit down at the table and we're going to tally this up. That's what we're going to do. You see, I didn't have nobody to teach me, to keep me informed, to tell me what to expect, what are the pitfalls, what to look out for, what not to look out for, what to do and what not to do. I didn't have any guidance coming up. And I realized that a lot of these mistakes came simply because I didn't have nobody willing to pour into me. So I said, you know what? If Father gives me wisdom, knowledge, and comprehension and understanding, I'm not going to let that generation that is on my watch go being ignorant. You will know the truth and that truth that will set you free. We mutually agree, mutually agree wholeheartedly with all the above goals that I mentioned previously before, and I'll go back over them again in case you had a moment of amnesia. Spouses are incentivized to not lead their relationship, but instead to work things out and overcome their selfishness by trying to develop trust and good communication. Both spouses are required to take full financial and personal responsibility for their children. The property, the property that they accumulate together can be properly dispersed under all conditions. Now, again, we mutually and wholeheartedly agree. We mutually and wholeheartedly with agree. We mutually agree wholeheartedly with all the above goals. As a matter of fact, you can see them all reflected in the required marriage contract, all right, which I'm going to go over here one day. And we believe that it would constitute and compel um, idolatry and to be coerced by anyone to obtain a state marriage license. In other words, you listen to me, you ain't going to want to get no state marriage license. I got a nugget I want to drop on you here for a second, okay? Check this out. Divorce. Listen very closely. Listen very closely. Listen very closely. Listen very closely. I got people on YouTube now, mind you, it's amazing, isn't it? Now, watch this. They come to my channel. They're listening to me, getting educated about the system, marriage, divorce, and everything else. But then they're going to tell me what you can and can't do. And everybody says, a prenuptial agreement don't work. Do you know the reason why a prenuptial agreement don't work? Dumb dumbs, you people that oppose me. I'll tell you the reason why. A prenuptial agreement is exactly what it means, prenuptial. It has to be in place before the marriage ceremony, before the consummation. And it has to be approved and signed by witnesses and dated as such. That's when it's in effect. If you're going to get married and make a prenuptial agreement, it don't work. It don't work. If you're going to do it simultaneously, it still don't work. It don't work. Now go check me out and prove it since you know it all. You got all the questions of doubt to, to actually throw on there. You know what's amazing to me? All these people question me, question us, question the ministry, question the sister sisters broadcast about a lot of things that they don't live one eye older than what we live. They don't live set apart. They don't live separated. They've sacrificed and given up nothing. They have no proof in their life to actually show you that they're a child of the king, nothing but words that come off the edge of their lip. You see, Paul addressed this some time ago. He said, you show me your faith without works, and I'll show you my faith by my works. And that's what straightway is. It's a beacon. It's a beacon. It's a light post. 
to all the world out there to show you that this can be done even in the midst of a wicked and perverse generation. So all you people got questions of doubt, laced with doubt, that think we don't know what we're doing, why don't you get out there and show us how to do it so we can question you then? How about that? A marriage is a contract, and all that is required is a prenuptial agreement to complete the marriage. But if you are sufficiently indoctrinated to believe that a judge, mayor, minister, priest, must join you in holy matrimony, and you subsequently applied for a license. Now you both have a married, have both have married the state capital letters, capital Sierra, Tango, Alpha, Tango, Echo, state as well. Now the state is entitled to its fair share of the division of your marital property. You know the reason why? Because the state capital Sierra Tango Alpha Tango Echo is the husband in a relationship. They're the guardian, you're the ward. Both male and female are nothing more than the wives in a relationship. And all fruit belongs to the state. So now that the state is entitled to its fair share of division of your marital property, should the marriage not work out or should you die, called probate, 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 probate. Some people might say that a divorce should be included on this list of impossible issues. But then they don't know why I know, huh? Divorce. An action in divorce is a request to break the license marriage contract. And if you desire a divorce and your spouse refuses to consent to a divorce, no state judge will grant you a divorce decree because the judge has not been granted the consent of both parties. See, there is a way around this, however, which your lawyer will never admit to because he cannot make money from giving you truthful or sound advice. I told y'all to listen. Beep, 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 beep. I'll repeat it again for those of you who have practiced apathy and complacency. You found yourself lethargic and using selective, passive uh, listening skills. For those of you who decide to sober up, let me repeat again because I'm getting ready to go to something very important. I'm going to say it again. Can y'all tell that I'm putting stars up and everything else trying to get you to listen? An action in divorce is request to break the licensed marriage contract. If you desire a divorce and your spouse refuses to consent to a divorce, no state judge will grant you. A divorce decree because the judge has not been granted the consent of both parties. There is a way around this, however, which your lawyer will never admit to because he cannot make money from giving you truthful and sound advice. Mind you, and they're supposed to be people of honor, truth, and integrity. You may want to ask them about that. Note, 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 note. Eh, 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 eh. I'm going to give you some notes here. Note, Puerto Rico is a United States territory acquired from Spain and it still operates under Spanish law. This was never changed by the corporate United States when Puerto Rico became a U.S. territory. So first, you need to fly to Puerto Rico. Once you're in Puerto Rico, you can establish a residency by simply opening a P.O. box for a period of three days just after opening the post office box, hire a local paralegal to prepare an action in divorce for you. The paralegal will file the divorce petition immediately, which is generally a certificate form document, and it will be hurled by a Puerto Rican judge within three days. Under Spanish law, your spouse is not required to be served the divorce petition. Only the divorce decree. Five days after the decree, your former spouse will receive a divorce decree in the mail written entirely in Spanish which cannot be contested and must be honored by all U.S. federal and state courts. Note, immediately after the Puerto Rican judge declares you divorced, if you choose, you can marry again 
by contract or by license. Both are legitimate, but no one will ever tell you that. I would do some serious investigation on it. I think it could be truthful and see if it's so. If it is, that'll stop all this 50-50 asset crap and, and this entitlement mentality that people have, wouldn't it? The division of the property in the custody of children is a much more complicated issue, but at least a divorce cannot be utilized as leverage against you to divide up your property less than proportionally, which is exactly why American judges will not uh, bear case B, or let me spell it out for you, B I F U. R C A T E. I wonder what that was. Anyway, got distracted there. Something looked kind of funny. E G, divorce division, uh, property custody, support alimony. The hope is that your desire to obtain a divorce is worth more than you, than anything else, or more, worth more to you than anything else you own now or in the future. Civil disobedience to corrupt governments is a biblical mandate. Civil disobedience to corrupt governments is a biblical mandate. By the way, it reminds me, I got to get some information to Brother Reynolds. It just popped up in my head again. That's what happens when we get so much. Anyway, there are several New Testament verses that are quoted out of context by the alleged government authorities and false churches in order to deceive people into believing that they should support their man-made government and obey their man-made law. I, if I heard this once, I heard it a thousand times this week. People trying to use Roman 13 to try to tell you that it's stating that we need to obey governments because God ordained these governments. Let's listen. The Bible is an Israelite book. It's only for Hebrews. It's only for Israelites. You don't believe me? You can check 2 Corinthians um, chapter 11, verse 22. Philippians 3, verse 5. You get it? This, however, is not the case as Yah has never given his people authority to make their own law or to walk in the, the statutes of men. He hasn't. We're under different law. Israel, as Israelites in exile to Yah on this earth, we serve a higher authority than state. It's to create a universe. Almighty Yah himself. Does that make sense? Hallelujah. I'll tell you what. I'll take one phone call here tonight. Let's go to Alaska. Call the number nine. Zero seven nine zero seven is Pastor Dow. You you on the street with you radio broadcast? How can I help you there in Alaska? Well, Alaska going once. Shalom, Pastor. How are you? Shalom. Hey, it's Sister Rachel. I was just calling in to um, say hi to all the saints. It's been some time, and uh, I miss and love everyone, and hope everything's well with. All the saints there on the land. I just wanted to let you know that all is well here. So good to hear your voice. Glad to hear the report too. Yes, sir. Have you seen any bears? Yes, sir. Um, no, but uh, basically, my plan is if we're out and about in the playground area across the street from our home, uh, I've left the door unlocked in the car so I can run to the car should I see one. So, oh boy, that's dangerous. Yes, it is. Man, that's dangerous because, you know, bears are pretty fast. Oh, yeah, I think they can run up to 30 miles per hour like a horse. Yeah, and and only a, a human, the fastest human on earth can only clock 20. That I did not know. Thank you for teaching me something new. Yeah, and that ain't you and I. You and I are clocking like 5 <laughs> or 10. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, uh, just let Mama Carol know I love her and say hi to um, everyone else for me. But, uh, no, things are really well here, and uh, I hope to be seeing uh, you some more pictures of the little ones. So. Man, I, hey, that's good. We need to get them. But I tell you what, you watch out for them bears. Yes, sir. I wouldn't care what them boogers say. I'd carry me a firearm. That's what I'd do. 
light him up. <laughs> you know, I already tried, but you can't, so. Oh, boy. You better, get, right. you better get some throwing knives or some throwing stars. Get Uncle Brother, get him, man, and start doing whatever you can while you, because I'm telling them bears ain't no joke, man. They be eating folks up there. You know that? Yes, I have uh, seen numerous reports at work in the area I worked in over the past year where they uh, were uh, bear attacks, and there was actually a, a bear right outside a store I was working at going through the garbage cans and stuff. So Hey, how about this? How about you park your car as close to the playground as possible, and then that way you leave it unlocked, and then when you need to run to it, you you have less steps. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's definitely the plan. Thank you for the advice. Man, that sounds real good, because I tell you, man, you don't want to give the bear too many steps. It's good hearing your voice, daughter. All right. Bless you. Bless, Bless you. you, sir. Love you. Shalom. Love you, too. Shabbat shalom. Sister Rachel. When Jesus said this, he was totally aware of Yah's law. When he says, render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar, and unto Yah the things that are Yah in Mark 12, verse 14 through 17. We can be assured that he was not telling the teachers of the law to do contrary to Yah's law, unlike Christianity teachers and the rest of the pagan religions in the world, making you lawless, thereby putting you under Satan's system. Let's see exactly. We need to see what exactly what Jesus, well, you know, you know what I mean? Let's see what exactly Jesus meant. I'm going to go over this for a second. And we're going to call it tonight, all right? What do he mean when he says the things which are Caesar's? When he said this, the context was that the Pharisees wanted to trap Jesus. They were the teachers of the law, and they knew full well that Yah's word, and they knew it full well what Yah's word said about the laws and the government other than Yah's. The Pharisees knew all of the following. They knew that even their own Israelite kings could not make any law, like unlike many of you wicked Americans claiming to be Christians and Israelites, you make your own law walking out of your own idolatrous ways, showing that you don't have no fear of y'all. I tell you what, the day is going to come. It's coming. Uh, what I leave off? Well, anyway, the Israelite kings knew they couldn't make a law, but could only administer Yah's law, not turning aside from Yah's commandment to the right hand or to the left. Dabarim, that's Deuteronomy 17, verse 14. And the word of the Lord through his servants Moses, when thou, he's talking about Israel, are coming to the land which Yahweh Elohim gives thee, and shall possess it, and shall dwell therein, and shall say, I will set a king over me, like as all the nations that are around about me. Skip to verse 18. And it shall be when he sits upon the throne of his kingdom, that he shall write a copy of this book in the law, out of which is before the priests and the Levites. Verse 19, and it shall be with him, and he shall read therein all of the days of his life. How I many you people do that? How I many people? I mean, I live on the community. I, we have everything ranging from old people, young people, teenagers, uh, and even children. And I'm telling you, for the most part, most, most people are simply ain't interested in reading Yah's law. They don't care about what he says. They only care about their self self. They don't care about what Yah says. They don't. You can see it in them. It's a shame, too. And me, I ain't got no time to cast pearl before swine. But then, also, for the most part, the majority part, they love Yah's law, and they read it all the time. And they love it. So I do have to make sure I be fair and balanced when I make those statements. And it shall be with him, and he shall read therein all the days of his life, that he may learn to fear Yahweh the Elohim, and to keep all of the words of this law and these statutes and do them. Verse 20, that his heart be not lifted up above his brethren, and that he turn not to the side from the commandments to the right hand or to the left, and to the end, that he may prolong his days in his kingdom, he and his children in the midst of Israel. So somebody said, 
Well, Pastor Dow, since you the pastor, the head honcho, and the straightway minister, who keeps you in check? We just got finished reading it. See, I read that law, and that law keeps me humble. It doesn't allow me to be puffed up above my brethren, even though I'm the pastor in authority. How about that? And there's a lot of people more intelligent than a lot of you people out there listening on the other side of this camera that is in this ministry. We have a lot of educated people in this ministry, professionals. And we read this, believe it, live it, and do it. My admonishment is that you do the same thing. Uh, on Patreon, if you are not a member of Patreon, you need to go over and sign up because this week coming up, because the doors are still down. I'm going to be talking extensively more on this marriage license and contract at different levels inside the Patreon. Oh, so if you want to know how to get on Patreon, go to my YouTube videos down in the description box down below. And guess what you see? You see all these links to how to get in contact with us. I may even do a live radio broadcast next week. I'm not making any promises or commitment, but I may do it. For what? Why? Well, I may do it for the sole purpose um, of answering some questions for some of you people who don't follow the ministry. So if you stay tuned to YouTube, you stay tuned to Patreon, you may know the time that it may come. And now, of course, for those of you people who love the law of Yah, we're going to go over just like I did now. Just go ahead and wet your, wet your taste buds down with the reason why Yahshua read what he read and said what he said and did what he did, which is nice to know. We give you a lot to think on here tonight. I mean, there's one of these broadcasts right here give you more than what you bargained for in the first place. I'll take one more phone call here tonight. We went to Alaska. Now we're going to go clear across the other side. We're going to go to New York. New York, Brother Dominic. Call number 718 Seven one eight seven one eight. This is Pastor Dow. You on the Servitude Radio broadcast? How can I help you? Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, my pastor. Shabbat Shalom, son. How you doing? Uh, I'm doing very well. I'm doing very well. Uh, I wanted to call tonight just give you to give you a greeting. Uh, we haven't spoken for a little while. I just wanted to greet you, greet all the straightway pastors. Elders, deacons, and I want to uh, let you guys know that I'm keeping you guys in prayer. You guys are in my thoughts continually and every single day. And guys, uh, thank you for this uh, this support group. I've been up to date on basically all the videos. I haven't been actively making the videos, but it's been a great, great forum to really see the brethren, see how everybody's coming together and being one spirit and one mind. Hallelujah. So you like these teachings? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A lot of knowledge are coming forth, especially about marriages. You've been talking about it for so long, but I guess for certain people, it just has hit. And unfortunately, led the line go through marriage under the government, you reach Consequences and its expenses, and fixed. But thank you so much for putting the information out there, especially you last week. Blocked off also, very, very, very informative. Bless you, Pastor. Well, you're welcome. You're welcome. All right, my brother. How you doing? You doing pretty good? Yeah, I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right, sir. Hallelujah. Staying, staying up, staying encouraged, staying blessed, you know. Keep myself active, my, my, my pastor. I got you. Stay that way, my brother, okay? Will do. Bless you, sir. I love you. Give everybody our love. Yes, sir. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. All right. Until next time, I bless each and every last one of you. In the sweet presence of strong and victorious and mighty overcoming name, our soon coming King Yahshua Hamashiach. Don't forget, everybody, we are praying against, as a ministry, against Eileen, Baja, Bill Yamilia. We are praying against that Jezebel, that witch. Y'all know what to do, Israel. 
Let's get after it. Everybody joined together in concerted agreement against this devil and this Jezebel. She needs to be shamed and needs to be humbled. In Jesus' name. So I bless y'all in the sweet precious stone. Victor is the mighty overcoming name. Yahshua Hamashiach, Jesus Christ. I hope to see y'all next week. Be the Father's will. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. King is coming. Look at him looking.